Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Xbox Life episode 296, post E3 2014. Woo! -hoo -hoo. What a great day! Yeah. Um, I am your host, Mark AK Wingman 709, and with me, as always, is Mr. Brun. EJ Swick 33. <laughs> yep. And we had uh, we had audio that time in the intro. All right. Hey, Brian, nice. can you sit back just a tad little bit? There we go. Uh -huh. yeah, there you go. Nice. Good? There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. I sit too far back. You guys are too close. Bro, you're perfect. And so with that, Bo is with us uh, back again by popular demand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he just laughs. <laughs> Man of few words. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm w I'm just waiting. <laughs> that was your oh, cue to introduce yeah, yourself. <laughs> yeah. Hey, group, uh, back back again. Bench Veloki is the uh, gamer tag. <laughs> All right, so we are going to dispel with the normal normal stuff that we normally do. Except I am going to plug because I didn't do it yesterday. Our Amazon link. So. Please uh, be sure to use our Amazon link on our website, and if you click on the one on the website, it will go take you to the associate, affiliate, associate, whatever. It'll take you to our Amazon page that is closest to your local location. So, there. Enough said. So, we I don't think any of us have played anything since last night, um, so we're just going to move right to it and talk about E3. So, there's the format that I've kind of spelled out for here is... Uh, some pre-show stuff that I heard, um, the Microsoft conference, and then a couple of items that um, was in the Ubisoft and the EA conference. And we'll talk about everything in those unless you guys want to. I just picked out kind of the big items. But uh, again, you guys jump in. I'm just going to kind of run through this list top to bottom, and we'll take each one as we go and talk about each item. So first thing, I missed this one, but I know, uh, Bo, you caught it. And that was achievement snapping. This was something that was mentioned prior to uh, the show, the Microsoft press conference starting. So can you explain to us what this actually is? I can. It's, it's actually a really cool feature that uh, I know I'm looking forward to. Um, you can snap the achievements pane uh, with any game that you're playing. And it's going to, uh, it's sortable. So you can rank how all the achievements in the game and how close you are to achieving them. And then if you are, uh, you know, I, I know several times I've gone back in and saying, okay, what's, what's something easy we can get that I'm only a, you know, a couple of kills away from picking up. And so with this, you can actually in real time watch your progress towards each achievement in the game. And then you can highlight the achievement and hit a help tab, which will take you into a, uh, to the web page for the game and show you how to achieve that achievement as well. So it will uh, definitely provide incentive for uh, for getting more uh, more of the gamer scores per game, at least uh, here at my house. Oh, awesome! That'd be cool. I guess Brun will miss out on that until uh, until he gets his X one. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. See now, there you go, Brun. Achievement snapping. Uh, yes. I don't know Xbox. So I, you know, Grim Fandango. I, just save I don't know. It. Just save it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right, let's let's get let's I mean, go. If you want to play fifteen-year-old games, I guess you can jump ship and go over the other platform. Mm -hmm. But uh, next up, uh, Killer Instinct Season Two was announced, and the very first character was uh, introduced. It's TJ Combo. Um, are, have either of you guys? I don't. I'm pretty sure Bo, you're not a. <laughs> you didn't even care to play it at the thing we went to, but and I'm nope. not a fighting nope. guy. But how about you, Brian? I'm not either. Nope. Not either. I, I know. I, I know. People were cheering when they heard about it. So a lot of the Killer Instinct people obviously know who that is, and they were excited about it. So that's good news for them. So at least there's a new so. season, more characters coming to the game, probably some new backgrounds because that one looked new that they showed mm -hmm. today. But uh, so we should have another probably eight characters I think in season two. So that'll be coming soon. Uh, and here I am already skipping the screenshots. So there he is. That's the old 8-bit, 16-bit, whatever, T, TJ combo. Um, next is another announcement that I could really care less about, but obviously a lot of people are playing Happy Wars, and Happy Wars is coming to Xbox One. Yay. Hmm. So yeah. eh, free to play, I guess. You know, you got to get it out there. Right. If a lot of people are playing it, at least it's 
come over to this platform. I guess that's good. Right. <laughs> so, um, all right. So that those were the things that I heard about prior to the press conference. Uh, did either of you catch anything that I had missed? No, I, I just, like, I didn't get to watch anything live. I actually came home and watched the conference itself. So I took all my notes and stuff on that. All right. So. Well, the, was there anything else that you can think of that I might have missed? Um, no, other than the uh, the green carpet, as they called it. Um, the <laughs> uh, Sunset Overdrive crew was stopped by the police coming in, and they weren't <laughs> allowed to enter the conference originally. I, I guess they had a... Uh, one of those uh, creatures mounted to the front of the bus that they were on. Yeah. <laughs> that was a cool looking bus. <laughs> uh, oh, but yeah, you know, other than that, no, it was just, uh, you know, a lot of hype to get everybody prepared for the actual conference. Mm. All right. So oh. this, this, the conference started and the very first half, I think maybe even a little over half the conference was dedicated to oh, yeah. stuff we're going to see in 2014. So yeah. from here until we tell you, everything we're going to talk about for the next bit is all coming out in 2014, at least is scheduled to come out in 2014. So here we go. The first item up, of course, they led with Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Which um, is something last night you said they should lead with it. If, you know, yeah. get it out of the way. And lead with it. Yes. That's a good choice. So I'm glad they got it done and out of the way. Mm -hmm. I still think they spent too much time on it. I, I just don't think that... I, I don't... I mean, I don't think that Call of Duty... I mean, it sells. It's the biggest game out there. I get it. But to be leading your show every year and having that much time dedicated to it, I just don't get it. I, I felt they, they spent too much time with it, and I would have rather of them said... You know, maybe show it about half the time that they did with this game. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they could have done two, three minutes and I'd have been happy and let's move on and show me a little bit more of some other stuff. Um, or maybe even they could even fit Quantum Break in there if they had to cut this thing in half. Um, I'd have rather seen Quantum Break for eight minutes instead of Call of Duty. But, um, but <laughs> at least uh, Eminem wasn't out there rapping. You know, true, sing true. song, but <laughs> but uh, so it is futuristic weapons. I did notice they have jump boots. I did see mechs, which I kind of chuckled. Um, it didn't look like mechs you could get into. It, it was this one in the cutscene that was walking. Mm -hmm. It was a four-legged mech that was crawling, you know, walking all along. I don't know yeah. if we are going to get to get into anything. I kind of hope not because it's like, oh, really? You're ripping off Titanfall? But they do yeah, have they jump had... boots. But they don't look to be as good as like Titanfall. You know, you gotta make the comparisons. I mean, we can't get a, we can't get around that because they're you know Titanfall is Call of Duty with Max. So when when right. Call of Duty's gonna start adding in that type of stuff, you're gonna have the inevitable comparisons. But the jump boots look to be very minimal. Like it would be enough to boost you on top of a car and that's it. So they didn't show any wall running or wall jumping or stuff like that. But you could fall from a high. And then hit your jump boots at the end so that you could actually land. I thought that was kind of yeah. cool. Well, it's a, it's more. Like, I thought it was more like a jetpack. But when you're talking about comparison games, and and I have it in my notes, the first game that popped into my mind when they were showing this was not Titanfall. It was Halo ODST. Yes. They had well, yeah. they had drop <laughs> they had the drop pods. They have the jetpacks. They, you know, futuristics, you know, futuristic this and that. I thought the grenades were cool. Like, you could switch what grenade you wanted. But the one thing that kind of really annoyed me was they, the guy was running out of bullets, but then just pulling a lever. He, he wasn't, like, changing magazines or anything. He just pulling a lever. And I'm just like, why do you have to pull it? Is that just a mechanic they have to have in, obviously? to make you run out of bullets and I it was kind of confused about that but Halo ODST is what I thought about even the int even the the beginning of the game was ODST it was just like this is crazy it's exactly almost exactly the same thing <laughs> so yeah. that's what res I resembled to me was ODST so that's still looked good, good. Well, looked the game good, looked really really good um, without a doubt and I did like the grenades Instead of having, yeah. you know, that you could cycle what type of grenade it was, you know, um, I thought that was kind of neat. And, oh, that wasn't, that wasn't there. Okay, I gotta save it. I was thinking of another grenade 
but that was a different game. Um, mm. So I'll save that for later. But yeah, that was cool. You could switch what type you were going to throw. Yeah. So, what do you think, Bo? Are you are you going to sign up for another round of duty? No, <laughs> no, not no. at all. Um, you know when they uh, they showed pulling the uh, the car doors off the hinges, <laughs> and and using that, yet the very next scene didn't have the strength to pull the um, the door open mm. on the on the side of the ship. It's like, come on, you know, either either you've got the super strength or you don't. Mm. Uh, but I, I did notice the uh, on the gun itself there was some kind of timer that was counting upward. So is that possibly the jump boost or or the the extra strength energy that maybe gets depleted? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, and there's probably yep. maybe it's um I mean we'll have to watch all this. There was so much stuff to see that like things like that. I I obviously missed that when he was reloading, but. We'll have to go back and rewatch, and we'll probably learn more. But if it's all future wist, wrist, futuristic technology and weaponry, then, you know, who knows what it is he's actually shooting. Maybe he's not shooting bullets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe they're virtual bullets. I don't know. He's got to reboot the magazine. I don't know. <laughs> so. All right. All right. So any other, dish, any other comments on Call of Duty? Nope. All right. Nope. So Forza 5 came out. They had a real quick uh, announcement. The Nibbering track is available today, and it is free. Yep. Free. And that's what, a 13-mile track or something like that? Yeah, it's 13 big. 13 or 16 mile. Yeah, it takes a long time to drive that stupid thing. It's a fun track, but, man, it's long. But uh, I was trying to figure out how to get it. I went and looked in the add-ons, and you can buy it for, like, 10 bucks. And I was like, wait, they said it was free. But yeah. it was like the Nurburgring booster pack, so there was like cars with it too. But the track, oh. I, I didn't load the game, but if you load the game, the track will probably come up automatically. Um, it did for the other two tracks. I never did download those. They were just in the game automatically. So that should be automatically in the game. Um, then they went into Forza Horizon 2, mm -hmm. and they got over 200 cars in that game with what I thought was going to be interesting and I'm looking forward to is the dynamic weather and the, the they, they were talking about a full day night cycle but they I thought yep. they had that in the last one too and I can't remember if there was weather I don't think there was weather in the original Forza Horizon I just don't recall ever driving in the rain but the the videos and stuff that they showed it's going to be really neat i think if you're driving all of a sudden you go into some rain and i mean if they keep it realistic where you've got to be careful because you're going to slide more or you know your control's going to change in these super fast cars it can really change the outcome of a race i think that's kind of cool mm -hmm. that'll be neat um the drive -tars, uh from forza 5 actually will work in this game so yes that was cool i'm i know that uh, I'm going to be running a bunch of you off the road because my drive guitar is a jerk and I've been told that by the community. <laughs> so you're, you're not going to get away from me in Horizon 2. Um, and uh, we will create a TXL club. Just, uh, we'll continue that. We have one in Forza Horizon and I will definitely be getting this day one and I'll create that TXL club and we'll, we can have up to a thousand people in the club. So it's a good way to be able to share cars and stuff like that. So I'm going to get this day one. Uh, what do you guys, what did you guys think about this? I thought the game looked awesome. I thought it looked fun. I mean, instant join, no lobbies, I think was another thing they, they put out on that. And mm -hmm. I mean, it just looks fun. Like if I was going to buy a car game, I don't think I'd buy like the, the fours of five. I think I would wait for, for this. This is, this is much better. Uh, Forza Horizon, I played the crap out of. I loved it. Um, I bought Forza 5, and I was like, I played a bit, and it's just like, I don't know, that game just gets old. It's the same thing over and over. Where I mean, this right. is still a driving game, but it's more interesting, I think, to drive to different places and trying to find the hidden cars, uh, the garage finds, and the, you know, knocking down the billboards. And, you know, there's just, there was more to this one. You're not driving in circles or... You know, you're not on the on a. You don't feel like you're confined to a racetrack. You know, um, I I just really love Forza Horizon, so I will be buying this day one. So, Bo, are you going to be involved in this one? Am I going to be able to? We going to race together? Uh, more more so than uh, Forza Five, yes. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, this this would be closer to, to my style. I mean, I've I've been uh, looking forward to um, what is it the uh, the crew, but um, you know, this one I'll definitely give a try. Cool. Cool. All right. Yep, and clubs. Yeah, you know, clubs. Yeah, you already or talked club. about that. Yeah. Yeah. The crew. Oh, and the well, club. I mean, I mean, I mean, like. Yeah, I'm talking about Forza Horizons, actually. Because I was reading the thing in Twitch, and you already mentioned it. We're going to have a club already. Yeah. So. All right. So then they went and showed Evolve, uh, which is coming out fall of 2014. The only real news, and, you know, fill me in. Again, if I miss something or I don't have it, it's because I was working today. <laughs> this was on in the background. I was really trying to follow it as much as I could. Um, but the only thing I got out of the Evolve was that there's going to be a beta and the DLC, both the beta and the DLC will be first on Xbox. So yep. um, I know a lot of people were up in arms about um, Battlefield Hardline. Got uh, beta invites today on PlayStation 4 and PC. So, but we're getting we're getting beta stuff first too. If that matters to you, uh, betas don't to me. But um, so we'll be able to play Evolve first before anybody else. So, yeah. and it's coming this fall. Yep. Right. So. That was pretty much all they talked about, right? I mean, they showed the classes, but and again, this is a yeah, that was four v one game. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Any any anything else on this one? Or you guys got any comments or what you thought of that? Yeah, yeah not on that one. Nope. So that was brief. Yeah. All right. That one was quick. So here's one everybody's gonna love: Assassin's Creed Unity comes out October twenty eighth. Mm -hmm takes place in the 18th century French Revolution and the one thing that I liked is the co-op. You can play this with up to three friends. Yep. So all four, four person and they showed that co-op in the press briefing and I'm like that that's the reason I would play this game just so I can mm -hmm. play with other people. Yeah. It'll but be it's fun. To... You know, it's 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 more fun when you're with people. So now, do you think do you think this will be a scalable difficulty? Uh, for example, is it um, going to be easier with four than with one? Or if you chose to play a, a scene by yourself, are they going to increase the amount of guards if there's four of you versus one of you? That that's a good question. I would imagine that it would be they'd have to scale it, and make it harder. But it didn't really look like it would be that complicated, even in the demo we saw. Like Dead Rising 3, there are scenes in that where you played it by yourself and it was extremely difficult. You play it with somebody else and it was a piece of cake. It was too easy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, maybe that's what we'll have here. I don't know. But we'll, I guess we'll see. We'll, we probably won't know that until closer to the game release. All right. I, I, the game looked great. It, it looked like it played great, you know, but I don't know. I, I'm so burned out on the Assassin's Creed. I tried... SSN's Creed 4 and I just couldn't get very far with it and I'm just like I'm just bored with this It's, it, I think it's just one of those even Call of Duty I'm bored with Call of Duty man I still haven't played it on Xbox One even though I own it I started the campaign and I'm just like ugh I don't want to play this you know it, it's like I'm playing the same thing every year um and I, I, I thought about it today when I was watching the EA press conference. I'm like, oh, wow, NHL. Oh, wow, Madden. Oh, wow, golfing. Oh, wow, you know, NBA. FIFA, yeah. It's like, yeah, FIFA. It's like, wow, gee, your conference every year is the exact same thing. You know, mm -hmm. and, and those things can't change that much. You know, whatever, ooh, we've got emotion this year. Or we, <laughs> okay. Right. See, next year it'll be like, ooh, we've got dynamic fluttering 1080p sound or something you know it's like there's always some buzzword that they got to come up with and to make it sound like oh i gotta have it but it's still the same thing over and over and that's what i feel call of duty's done uh assassin's creed is done and uh you know i, I buy call of duty only out of i've always been a call of duty fan but um even this next one, no, no, the current one, I'm really kind of like, yeah, I'll buy it because it's Call of Duty, but uh, I probably won't put much time in it. I just can't do that with Assassin's Creed anymore. Anyway. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. So, what did you, any other further comments on on it? Nope. Nope. All right. Nope. All right. Don't let me dominate the show here. 
No, I mean you're you're going right down the line so far. <laughs> Dragon's Age, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition comes out October yep. 7th, and DLC will be first on Xbox. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I've never played any of the other games. Have either of you guys or have any interest yeah, in this? I played uh, Dragon Age. That was loud. <laughs> played uh, Dragon Age 2. It was pretty fun. You know, there's a couple people in our community that are big Dragon Age fans, so I know they're excited about that. Looks good, but, you know, it was quick trailer, and they were kind of off on to the next thing, and they spent some time on the next one. So, which is Sunset Overdrive. Overdrive. Bum, yeah. bum, bum. Dude, they had... This was, like, the best trailer Yes, it was. Introduction I've <laughs> ever seen. When this started, I'm like, I'm like, what is this? You know, you're That's watching this. It's doing. like that that one lone army guy hiding behind a box and mm -hmm. trying to shoot against these other guys. And I'm just like, and it, and it kind of played for you know uh, quite a bit. That I'm like, what is this? You know, you're trying to figure yeah. out what the game is, you know, is I'm like, hmm, is this it, like that Warface, or is this some new free-to-play game they're going to come out with? Or And then all of a sudden, they, they he, like, hears something, and he looks over at the door, and it's just Insomniac Games <laughs> on the door, and I'm like, what? Yeah. And all of a sudden, that dude busts through from Sunset Overdrive. <laughs> cover cover mechanic, eh? Uh, yeah, cover mechanic. Yeah, and then yeah. he's just, he's taken out to everybody from, by zipping around from above, and and then at the end, he's like, there you go, dude. Yeah, you, you, and, your you and your crate are yeah, safe. <laughs> yeah, you and your crate are safe. <laughs> so then he goes out into the world of, what is it, the city of Sunset. And and then that dude, that soldier, like, later on, kind of peeks his head out of a door and gets just gets eaten by a zombie. <laughs> and I'm like, that was awesome. <laughs> but that whole trailer was like, oh, my gosh, this game looks like it's going to be so much fun just because of the over-the-top craziness. Yeah. I, I'm excited for it. I'm going to have to pick this game up. Yep. Without a yeah, doubt. Yeah, it definitely looks fun. And, you know, it's got that, you know, it's, it comes out October 28th, and it's got that eight-person co-op mode in it. Yeah. So that's that'll be really interesting. So eight people. And and it's an Xbox One exclusive, which we do mm -hmm. need to remind people. So, yep. you know, again, and this is a third-party exclusive, so that's a good thing. And why did I just... Why did my TV just switch to TV? The Xbox, Xbox, turn off, yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the headset, thank you very much. <laughs> I must have said something. But, um... Yeah, it's and you can customize your character. They say you can customize your character, but I've never seen anything other than the main one they show. So I'm kind of curious as to what we can customize. I don't know if it's going to be can you make can you play as a male or female? Can you really customize what your character looks like or is it going to be you're just playing as this guy but you can change the clothing or you know, are they referring to as customized by the weapons that you want? So, I don't really right. know, but they, that's the first time I've heard that with this game, was customize your character. And they, all, they just said it, and then they just moved on. They didn't delve right. into it. So, but either way, I'm getting this game. Yeah. This was one not on, my, not on my list of stuff I was looking forward to. Should be fun. Yep. And then next is... Oh, oh <laughs> so this is this actually pretty... <laughs> yeah. Super this... Ultra Dead Rising 3 Arcade Remix Hyper Edition EX Plus Alpha. Yeah. I mean, it was quick and to the point, you know, it's just a thing, but I thought the I thought the name of it was actually pretty funny. So when, when it's available this, now. I was like, and they just kept going, going, and they just kept throwing up words, and I'm like, what the heck is I saw Dead Rising 3, <laughs> and I'm like, Ooh, yeah. what is this, what is this? And at this point, I still really don't know what it is. <laughs> It's DLC. Right. It's available right now for ten dollars, but I'm not really sure I want it. <laughs> yeah, it's got for per four person, uh, you know, co-op online. So, but yeah, it was it was a funny trailer though. I thought it was funny, but Bo, that's all I have on that. 
yeah, that one, uh, it seemed pretty, uh, pretty weird. <laughs> I, did, Still, you, did you see if there was any, um, I don't have my Surface in here. Did you see if there was any achievements attached to this DLC? N no, I, I have not. I hope not, because it, it didn't interest me. But I've got the game 100 percented and if they put if they put achievements on it, I'm gonna I'm gonna feel compelled <laughs> to go out to and buy, buy this and play this. But it, it looks like you get to play a like you can play as different characters from the Capcom world of video games, and mm -hmm. and it looked like it's all I don't know if it changes the entire game to look like was that 16 bit maybe. Uh, yeah, like back in the Street Fighter days. Yeah, everything was weird. You can use their power ups, and so it, it. But I'm like, okay, but does it change the game itself, or is this like a level you load, or is it? Can you just launch this mode in the regular game, and you're playing the regular game, but with this weird mode? So I really didn't understand all that, like what what it was. So I'm hmm. trying to see if uh, see if I can. F I don't know if I'll be able to find it in here, but I'll look up. I'll have to look up the Dead Rising 3 achievement list if I can find it. I should just do it on my Xbox, I suppose. Yeah. But because my phone's not going to work very well. Yeah. But anyways, it was kind of weird. But it's ten bucks. It's available today if you want it. Um, yep. If you do get it, let us know what you think. And then the next two were kind of grouped together. Um, a guy came out um, from Harmonix. Yes. And mentioned Disney Fantasia Music Evolved, which is coming out this fall. And it's an Xbox exclusive. And then also Dance Central Spotlight, which it is a digital-only purchase, which is Xbox exclusive, of course. It's a, you know, um, Connect game. And it's in September. So I think one might be... I think the Disney might be in October. It's October, yes. Disney yeah, and then October. And the spotlight is September. So, Correct. you know, they briefly came out. They kind of mentioned it. You know, I think they showed some video of the, the Dance Central. But, I mean, I'm not a big Dance Central person anyways. So it, it was cool to see. I think that was, like, you know, one of the few um, Connect games that they did show. But, you know, those two came out. But they, it's like they didn't even say that it was a Connect title, right? I, I right. I don't think they even stated that. I don't think the word Connect was even mentioned anywhere. Yeah. And it was interesting because, um, oh, those jerks! They added achievements. <laughs> Duck on it! I'm down to ninety three percent. Dun dun dun! I guess I'm buying some. I guess I'm buying some DLC later today. Mm. You've got to be kidding me! Oh no, there's a bunch of achievements. Oh no. Oh man. Oh well. Mm. <laughs> that makes me sad. So anyways, yeah, it was weird and even you know, I think Harmonix was kind of ticked off, you know, over the whole Connect being pulled because all their games are kind of relying on that. Mm -hmm. And it was weird when they came out that they were so short. It was almost like they were... I felt like they were obligated to do it, but they didn't want to. So they're just like, yeah, uh, Fantasia's coming out October, Dan Central Spotlight September, see ya. You know? I mean, it was right. like that brief, dude. I, I, it was, I was like, wow. That is different. <laughs> yep. Well, Bo, um, what did you think? Honestly, I, I missed that part. It was so quick. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think might, I was probably, you probably tipped your glass up to take a drink of something and put it down, and they were gone. <laughs> I I think I was posting in the uh, in the group, and um, by the time I looked back at the screen, they were on to the next topic. Yeah, it was quick. Mm -hmm. So we we might not get a Rock Band Five on Xbox platform if they do it. They might say, <laughs> "Forget Microsoft." All right. So how about the next one, Fable Legends? Um. <laughs> I, I watched it and I wasn't, you know, I, I like Fable, but I don't think this game really intrigued me too much. You know, of course it's exclusive. Um, you know, there's a multiplayer beta coming this holiday, so I don't think the game might actually be coming out this year. I just think, you know, the beta might be coming out this year. So, right. um, 
But, you know, there's a four-person co-op. You can play as a villain, which kind of looks like one of those uh, tower defense type. You're more of a tower defense where the other guys are four-person co-op. Um, but that's, you know, you can play as the villain. That's really all I saw on that. But it looks like some polishing. Like, if that's what the game's going to look like and how it's going to play or feel when I was watching it, I, I don't know if I would put my money on it. You know, if it's something that they're going to spend, you know, another year on or something like that, or, you know, at least eight months or something, then I would understand it a little bit more. So. Sorry, I got to. <laughs> I'm messing with my camera. It's like for some reason it's now my chin is sitting on the bottom of the frame, but I don't know. I'll have to fix my camera later. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I was interested in this actually. I or I wasn't. It wasn't anything I liked, and then I saw it. And I was. I thought it was kind of interesting looking game. Mm -hmm. It was weird though because um, a couple of things I noticed. And I forgot to mention this back with the Call of Duty. I felt like the sound didn't match up with the game. It was. It and I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the feed. You know, watching it through the internet or something might have been delayed. But it was like it didn't. It felt weird, almost like he was shooting a gun with no sound. Yet the sound was there, but it didn't seem to. It seemed kind of weird. And then this one, I felt like they would walk up and like swing or one hit every enemy, no matter what they were doing. Every enemy was dying in one hit. Right. And it almost felt like, you know, they say like like with Gears of War, there's a there's a a weight to the weapons. You can feel it. And this one felt to me like really light. This, and I don't know how to explain it. It's just kind of the thought that came to my mind. Like, wow, it doesn't feel like you're just walk up and, oh, and like you're hitting someone with a fly swatter and they're dead. You know, it's just it was kind of a weird feeling that I got or a sense when I was watching it. However, I thought it was kind of I, I liked the idea of what they were doing. This is kind of reminded me of like Evolve when they said, oh, you can play as the villain, so it's a 4v1 as well. Only mm -hmm. you're not in the game, you're setting up the traps and putting right. like the, and you know, the enemy players into it to try to trap all these guys. I thought that might be kind of fun. Um, so mm -hmm. we'll have to see I, more on this. It's definitely not something I was like, ooh, I'm buying that day one, but it's like, hmm, I'll have to look into this more. Right. So... I still wish they would have kicked a chicken. Right at the beginning, yes. I saw those chickens. I'm like, someone's got to kick one, and they didn't. I was yeah. like, There's that two was a chances, missed opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, two chances to kick that chicken, and they didn't do it. So, but uh, Was it just me, or did it seem that it, there was uh, almost a Jar Jar Binks commentary for comedy in the trailer? But that's that's Fable, though. That That really is. Yeah. So yeah. I, I know I think I saw your comment on that in, in the group, and I was like, "Yeah, but that's what Fable. Is. Fable's always been kind of dumb, humorous, funny, you know, like that." Okay. So. All right. So All that right. Uh, what do we say? That comes the multiplayer beta is available this holiday. Okay. Yep. So moving on, Project Spark. Was anybody interested in this and the announcement oh. that Conquer is in the game? Mm, I mean, besides that, and you know, they're adding co-op campaign in Galaxies. I really think it was just kind of showing that there's an update and that they're still working on it. So, but I past that, I haven't really played with it or know too much about it to speak about it. So, Bo, have you played it? Um, yeah, actually, I, I did download the demo oh, probably a month ago and spent an afternoon doing the tutorial. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of work that goes into creating a game. Um, you you um, have to you know plot your character and if this then that and and the um, the uh, the directions and mapping the buttons and um, you know after I got all that done, then. Um, Somehow my character was actually below below the ground, and I couldn't get him back above ground. So I kind of gave up on the game. Gotcha. Yeah. But it's it's good if you ever want to want to see what goes into creating a game and doing the programming for it. Yeah. I don't want to be a designer. That's why I'm a <laughs> gamer. 
I want to play them, not build them. <laughs> All right. All right. Next. So next up was something I guess Phil Spencer was very excited about. Um, yeah. An Xbox One exclusive, Ori and the Blind Forest. Um, this is one I could have just soon gone and taken a bathroom break at this one. <laughs> I, I think this this was the one that was like, whatever, dude, what is this? This is... It's an artsy style, and it just doesn't, you know... I'm not an artsy, fartsy kind of person, so... Yeah. It looked, actually... It looked good. I mean, it's kind of one of those... They're trying to touch on that... Um, some of those games, I guess, that you'd find on PlayStation and, and things like that that are flower or... Um, oh, man, what am I thinking of? I can't Journey. remember... Journey, thank you. Journey, you know, it, it seemed very journeyish or something like that, but it looked really good. I mean, it looked artistic, and and somebody put some time into it. The one thing that was so. interesting was what I thought was actually really cool about it was that that one point where you got that person like in the black robe with the white mask or that white yeah. smiley face, and then mm. there's this little whitish deer sprite looking thing whatever Mm -hmm. like halfway through when they like they were trying to give the person in the robe some food or something yeah it looked like they were dead yeah the owl was like that was really like emotional like Mm -hmm. i was like i mean it actually i was kind of sitting there going wow uh wow that like made kind of like made me sad and i have no clue who or what's going on (laughs) but they were they were able to get me to kind of feel for that little Mm -hmm. whatever it is at that, mm-hmm. it just in that very short amount of time, so that's kind of cool from that aspect. But it's just not my type of game. But yeah, and I mean, just imagine like if you, if it got you to feel that way in just that short period of time. Imagine playing the entire game and and really growing with that character or other characters and find out you know that you know the character passed away or something like well, that. And how would you feel then? <laughs> so did they just did they just spoil the game by showing you that someone dies? I don't think so. <laughs> By the yeah. way, this person's dead. So, mm-hmm. but it, it was it was neat looking. It's just it's I'm not into those type of games. It's just you right. Know, it's just not for me. I, I want bloods and guts and guns and chainsaws and you know. Mm-hmm. But anyways, it was very cool from that aspect, and it's cool because if it is a real big hit, it is an Xbox One exclusive. So yeah. All right, so the last game of 2014 was a big one. Yeah. Um, It's actually four games. Mm -hmm. The Halo Master Chief Collection coming out November 11th is confirmed to be true. It contains the first four games in the Halo series, Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, It's going to have custom playlists Mm -hmm. from all four games, so you can create playlists from various different games, which I think is cool. Yeah, I thought that was neat. Uh, Halo 2 is going to have the anniversary treatment, so you can play Halo 2 in the HD version or go back and play it in the original um, graphic look. The Halo 2 multiplayer will exist, and it will be untouched, which everybody seems to like. So they yeah. are it's going to be there exactly as it was. So Yeah, each, each multiplayer for each game is the original... You know, in its original form. So, you know, you're not going to get a Halo 2 form version of Halo 4's multiplayer. Each game is, I mean, it's going to be each game. Right. So, on a single interface, and all items are unlocked right out at the beginning. So, which is kind of cool, too. And there's over 100 maps. All yep. the games are going to run at 1080p, 60 frames a second. There's going to yep. be a 4,000 gamer score with this bundle. It's going to have dedicated servers for every game. So all your multiplayer and all that will be on dedicated servers. Um, There was a thing called Halo Nightfall, and uh, Bo helped me out because I missed what this was. But (laughs) is this like a TV thing? I I think it is. He he said it was a uh, digital digital shorts or uh, digital episodes of something, which I think is going to be a tie-in to the... um, Leads up to to Halo 5. Right. So is it going to be like a forward under dawn? Is it like live action show? I don't, I don't think it was think live action. Actually, 
Yeah. I don't think it was either, but I don't I don't know the answer to that either. So I don't know if it was or or wasn't. All I know is a series that leads up to the Halo the beginning of the Halo Five story. Well, last year um, when they were talking about the television programming, Spielberg was supposed to be doing the live action one. And when they called out the director producer of this Nightfall, it, it wasn't Spielberg; it was someone else. Uh, Ridley Scott. That's it. Yeah. Um. Okay, so li- this says what I'm reading here from the Ver no, yeah, Venture Beat. They're saying is Halo Nightfall is a new live action series that will debut on November 11th as part of Halo the Master Chief Collection on a single blah blah blah. Microsoft will release new episodes every week following the launch date. Ridley Scott is the executive producer behind the series and Sergi- Sergio Mimica Gezen uh, is directing. Now, Ridley Scott, he did Alien and Blade Runner. Uh, this Sergio did Battlestar Galactica, The Pillars of Earth, and Heroes. Um, the only way to watch Nightfall is to buy the collection, is what we're saying. So, this is a live-action series, so that's what this article is saying. So, I think this is going to be like the Forward Unto Dawn. This is nope. a separate project from the TV series that Steven Spielberg is producing which won't air until the fall of 2015. But just like the 2012 Halo film, Forward Unto Dawn, both shows will take place in the same universe as the games. Hmm. So, Nothing wrong with that. And nope. they started shooting this a couple of weeks ago. Yes! Yep. Ooh, fist pump, baby! <laughs> yep. 4,000 gamer score. I'm, I'm excited about Nightfall. Now that, it's, no. now that I did, you know, because I was like, you know, I wasn't sure what it was, and I was like, Hoping I wasn't getting my hopes up, but I wanted I want more live action, you know, shows. And with Ridley Scott doing it, this guy's awesome. Yep. So, or being a part of it, I guess. So. Yeah. But yeah, the only way to get that is to uh, get this Master Chief Collection. I guess I'm buying it. <laughs> and then last thing that comes with this is Halo Five Guardians Beta Access, which is supposed to be out at the end of this year. So, right. There you go. That's a lot of stuff in that package. I didn't catch a price. I saw people were saying it was 60 bucks. I don't know. Did they mention that in the conference and I just miss it? No, not in the conference no. they didn't. No. It was, but I uh, imagine it's going to be. It was uh, mentioned in the the uh, the post interview after the conference. Okay. And then, and then confirmed on several different websites, but it was um, when they were talking uh, for the interview right after the conference, it, they uh, they sat down and mentioned the price. Wow. I'm See curious how big it's going to be. Yeah, I'm curious on how much or how big it's going to be for the digital version. Because that's the thing. is. Well, it's going to be know. less than, what, 50 gig, right? That's a Blu-ray disc that holds 50 gig. Right. They said all four of these are on one disc. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. So True. It'll be less than 50 gig, I guess. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So that that uh, now that takes us. That wraps up our 2014 stuff. So now everything else that we talk about from here going forward is 2015 and beyond. Yeah. So, uh, Bo, do you wanna wanna take each of these topics? <laughs> Give me a chance to talk here. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, no, go ahead. I'll uh, I'll respond. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bron. Now you take this one because I could care less. All right. All right. So uh, the first one, 2015 and beyond. Uh, the first one was called Inside. Uh, um, it's uh, first on Xbox. Now, when I said first on Xbox, I don't know if they meant content or if they mean like a timed exclusive on the game in general. Uh, um, it is coming out early 2015. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what the game was. It, it, it well, was. If you look at the picture that's on the video. It, it was, oh yes, yeah. Okay, that should yeah. bring you back. But I, it reminded me of like kind of like Dead limbo. Light. Yeah, you know, reminds me of Limbo. With that side scroll, I never played Limbo. Right. But this is from the makers of Limbo. Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know. Is it? I don't know what Limbo was, but I never played it. All right. But this this didn't. It didn't look like there was much to this game. No. So. It's just one of those one of those indie games, you know, or I don't want to say indie, but you know, one of the smaller end games, but looks really good. So, but uh, 
yeah so there was that um you know on and on, next after that they went into the idea xbox program and basically the whole thing was we have over 100 games or 100 developers i can't remember what the number 100 was for but then they went through a bunch of um indie games um you saw a lot of the 8-bit stuff and 16-bit stuff and and just like you know what you would expect out of it um after that this is one that uh, wingman would like and uh before I let him speak, I'm gonna say uh, it's Tomb Raider. Woo! So, yeah, new Tomb Raider. I, I was a little, I was a little. I really liked the trailer that they had because um, I know in the first game she was kind of, you know, the one thing I always hear, and I didn't play the game, so I'm not saying that it's a bad game or anything like that. But one thing I always heard was like, you know, the first time she killed somebody, it was kind of like, oh, I killed somebody, and then all of a sudden it's like, kill, 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 kill. Um, well, but then in this. Kill or be killed. Well, exactly. You know, it's, hey, you got to do something to survive, right? Um, so in this one here, it kind of started out like as a therapist. You know, it's like, hey, you know, you got to talk about it, you know, come speak out about it or else, you know, people become this or that. And, and you know, and then it kind of shows her going in and just murdering more people. It's just like she's a full blown killer now. So it's like, I don't know why she's not a therapist when she's just going to go out and, you know, Acts the next person and puts the lotion on its skin and uh, <laughs> no, uh, you're, I'm, you're I'm just I'm just teasing. I'm, I know I'm just teasing. No, but the the thing was is it's kind of showing her becoming um, Laura Croft, you know, the Tomb Raider. So yeah. as as basically, you know, these two games, I guess, you know, it's prior to you know Tomb Raider as we all know it early and you know earlier in the game. So um, looks looked really cool so i know uh, everybody's excited about that holiday this now this one here is holiday 2015 so we got we got plenty of time you know for that so um after that we had on, the witcher 3 oh Before sorry Go that, the, after the show there was an announcement i caught that there is another tomb raider game coming out they're making a sequel to guardian of light which was the arcade game so if you mm. had that Tomb Raider Guardian of Light, if you'd played that on the 360, there is. And I don't, I don't, they did name it. I didn't catch the name though. Um, mm. But there is a sequel coming to that as well. Yeah. And that was free uh, on Xbox, you know, games for gold. Yeah, at one point. So yeah. most, most people should have, you know, had a chance to play that. Um, after that, they showed gameplay of The Witcher 3. I know uh, some people are excited about The Witcher 3. Uh, looks like a really good game. Um, after watching a little bit more, I don't know if it's something I I could see myself getting into, but it did look nice. Um, obviously, if you played the first before that, then this is something for you. Um, so then they came out and was just like, you know, what game would you like to see remade or or something like that? And then it came out and talked about how they remade. What was the game that they remade? prior I can't think of it but uh it was uh phantom dust I I'm not I'm not familiar with phantom dust and I apologize for not being familiar with it you guys familiar with phantom dust no no okay so it, to me it was kind of like they were talking about remaking like hey we came out and we remade this game and I forget which game they were talking about when they remade it um it's something that's out now but then they came and, and talked about phantom dust so and it is exclusive to Xbox um. So, uh, I'm gonna skip one real fast. I'm gonna talk about Scalebound, um, which is an Xbox exclusive. That's a new IP. Um, they just showed you know live action trailers slash. I don't I don't know how much of it was gameplay, but you have to kind of be you know iffy on those right about now. Um. That so there's that. It looks Japanese. Yes. Very Japanese. Uh, action game. Right, so, looks good. It looked good. Looks cool. It looked very good. Yeah. But it, I, and at the same time, I was like, "No, nah, I'll pass." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just, it's not. Uh, I think it, it, yeah. If you like Japanese action games, you'll probably really be excited about Scalebound. Yeah. So. So uh, the next one is something we saw last year, um, the Division, 
Um, this is new content for The Division comes first on Xbox, and the game is coming in 2015. Uh, I don't know exactly when in 2015. Um, but they kind of went through more of what they did last year. Um, it looks really fun. It looks like something I can definitely gorgeous. get into. Yeah, it looks awesome. The game is so. gorgeous, man. Yeah. I mean, as soon as it came on the screen, I'm like, oh, beautiful. You know, and all they were doing was like going down like a, the camera was like panning down uh, an elevator shaft or something. Um, and I'm just like, oh, that's beautiful. Look at the detail. It's gorgeous, you know. It, it's like, what kills me is like this game looks that good. Mm. And then, you know, something like Battlefield. I'm not trying to knock Battlefield. No, okay? no, no, no. But yeah. Battlefield if you really look at it, lacks detail. Yeah, you know, as this much game. as they tout that engine, yeah. it, there's like very little detail and stuff. Everything looks like there's no textures to the surfaces. All the walls look the same. Mm -hmm. This game, it's like my gosh, you can see the texturing on the walls, and there's color, and there's there's so much stuff and detail in the world. It looks believable, it looks yeah. livable and real. This is a gorgeous game. This has got to be the most beautiful game I've seen. Yeah, on and any it's, platform. and Ubisoft is becoming one of my favorites. And and, and you know, I will say they delay yes. every one of their games, and they delay them, and they come back great. So yeah. it's it's like delay if you have to. But it was always it was like Splinter Cell came out with that like that overlay like mapping UI type stuff. And it seems like every one of their games comes out and extends on top of that. And this one here, like when it's like, oh, I'm going to set up the map, and all of a sudden that kind of tilts, shift, you know, yeah. shift tilts up mm -hmm. a little bit, and like you're standing on the map. And then when they said, like, oh, look, we're downloading data, and it was like the orange uh, subway train where people were kind of running out of it, and you yeah. could collect data from it. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this thing looks awesome. And, you know, to have. Be co, you know, mainly co-op, and she, you know, when you're watching it, she's saying, "Hey, you know, we're gonna try to unlock my base." So you go up, and all that fight that you're doing is unlocking that base for her, which makes it seem like, "Hey, you get friends to help you do things in your game, and then you go help others, and it's like a ever evolving type game." And then when they unlock it, as they're zooming out, she's like, "I think we should work on the medical facility first. So it's almost like you then build up your base of operations, and it just looks it looks awesome. I can't wait. That 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 is a definite buy in my book. And to me, I know it came out last year, and it was like, you know, game of the show, and it wowed everybody. It, it just it it just wows me again. You know, I think it's it was just game of the I, show this year. To be honest, <laughs> well, I, I actually, well, well, you know, I, I don't. Well, I hold on. I got. I got to backtrack. It's second game of the show. I'm about well, to say what the game of the show was. <laughs> well, you know, so after the division, they did scale bound when we already talked about that, and that was it. So they wrapped it up. No, they did. So I am no, brown down. Now. <laughs> hold on, but before so they we came move, out. No, before we okay. move on, in the division, this was what I said earlier about a grenade. I don't know if you guys noticed he threw like a flash grenade and it and it and it like it was almost like a drone where it went out and it hovered over the dude and then it was like a strobe light was flashing him. It, uh oh. We lost Braun. You still there, Bo? Yeah, I'm here. Alright, hopefully he'll he'll come back in. But anyways, it, it it's like threw out a strobe. And it was flashing the guy, and then he walked up and and took him out. I'm like, that's cool. It, did, it wasn't a grenade that landed on the ground; mm -hmm. it hovered over the enemy. I'm like, that is like really slick. So, um, very cool stuff. No, that's that's I, game over. Once that uh, once that comes out, that's going to be the number one game for sure. Oh, it was beautiful. So, I think I think we're getting Bron back. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm back. So. I'm watching my camera do stuff, and I'm not watching any additional videos or anything. So I just having some trouble. But I was I was asking the the grenade. I didn't know when I cut out. Was that the one that was like flashing multiple times? Yes, mm -hmm. and it was hovering yeah. over him. It, yes, it, it wasn't yeah. a grenade that landed on the ground. It was like a drone. I'm like that was so cool. <laughs> Everything yep. about that game had me like, I want to play this right now. I would pay a hundred dollars for that game. You know, it was right. just like, oh my gosh, that's going to be the thing that will 
I can see myself not playing anything other than that. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope it lives up to the hype. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even say I hope because I really don't think there's a lot of hype. They they haven't been hyping it. It's been no. um, people like us that are hyping it. I hope yep. that what we see is the potential. I hope it lives up to what we think it will be. Well, yeah, you're not so. you're not seeing a sped up or slow motion, uh, you know, full motion video or anything like that. You're actually seeing the demonstration of gameplay. I mean, they're mm -hmm. they're taking their time. They're having the conversation. So I I think it's going to look. You know, I I can't say what it's going to look like if you're running in a firefight, but from a walking pace. The visualization is right there. Yeah, right. lots of detail. It's gorgeous. So I truly, I do got to say, it was for me. This was a game of the. This was the game of their of the conference for them. Even though the next item was the was I mean made my my day and my year. Oh wait, wait, wait! Remember, what? he said this is my section. Oh okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, just kidding. With you. I just want to take it from you. <laughs> Crackdown three, baby! No. Woo! Yeah. The one thing, the, well, it's Crackdown. They didn't actually put a three under it, but you know, cra the next Crackdown. And remember, yeah. it was like we were teasing yesterday. It was like, you know, all you want is Crackdown. It's like, yes, announce Crackdown, drop the mic, walk off. That's it. <laughs> and that's that's how they ended the show. They ended the show with um with a cinematic trailer or or announcement reveal of Crackdown. And I can tell you, I, this is another must buy so obviously xbox exclusive um i just so it does have a three behind it doesn't it this no this was oh, okay i couldn't find uh uh this was something someone i think made so mm. it, it was just they just listed crackdown um it is the third game in the series i think the info the leak info we had it was called crackdown sky something sky mm. i don't know I don't remember. We talked about it a few weeks ago, right. but um, yeah, they just comes a new crackdown. So yeah. I was so excited, dude. I I've got. I'm gonna be playing the trailer again before I go to bed. Just, to, just, just to, yeah. So I can go it to looks so. Dreaming of orbs and agents and it's yeah. it's obviously gonna be way over the top again. So yeah. I'm excited, dude. I was so happy. <laughs> I'm one one thing I'm hoping is is when I saw it was called just crackdown. I was like that to me that makes me happy because I'm thinking things like okay you know it's going to be cracked down we're going to have this full just humongous you know how they usually have the three factions and stuff like that it's like we're going to have this one faction to deal with and it's going to be a massive part of the game and then they're going to release another faction and release another faction and I mean even if you start with three I'm hoping like the DLC just keeps bringing it in and bringing it in and yeah. And you know, to where they don't give it a number, they just say it's crackdown. It's never ending. We're gonna just continue to develop for it. Right. So but yeah, that's how they ended the conference and the, the only downer you know. is there was no release date. Not even a hint. So this could yes. be a twenty sixteen title. True. So very but, true. Um, I, you know what? I don't care. I'm just happy it's been announced. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm gonna ride this wave for a while, so yeah. at least till the next E3. <laughs> yeah, and and it's like overall the the conference. You know, I I think we. I mean, we mentioned a lot of things. We we I think we got a lot of our wishes that we wanted that we talked about yesterday. Um, I I thought the conference did very well, and. Uh, it was you know awesome. they did yeah they did exactly what they said they wanted to do it's like we're going to come out we're going to talk about games we're not going to you know they didn't come out and spend five minutes talking about numbers and things like that of course they haven't done that for a couple of years um but you know they come out it's like hey this is all going to be about games and let it rip and they just went one yeah. after the other I just like kept that, going i love that phil spencer came out to start and he said thank you to the fans we yep. you know he gave a that's how he started let's thank you you know, you've been here with us, and and then they ended the show. He said, "We are going to continue to build the Xbox platform the way you want it to be. We are going to continue to listen to you." Right. I'm like, that that is awesome. I mean, a company says, "You tell us what you want, we're going to give it to you." You yep. know. And uh, you know, yep. the other side of town is they're going, hoo, hoo, hoo. "We gave you the choice to buy a camera from the start." Hoo, hoo, hoo. You know, yeah. like, come on, that's so juvenile and pathetic. 
Here's a company they they didn't they just came out and said here's it's just games, man. And guess yeah. what? Not a one of these was a remake. <laughs> Except well maybe Phantom no. Plus, we don't know what that is. But Well Halo I mean the Halos are re releases, but True, but it's something everybody wants. I mean right. everybody's been jonesing for a Halo too. So right. but um it's not like, oh, we're gonna release this game that's fifteen years old and uh, you know, and oh, and we're gonna give you backwards compatibility from so you can play PlayStation One games in the cloud, and you know, who cares? I don't want to play Xbox games in the cloud. Yeah. Really? I mean, I don't. <laughs> you know, I, I I want new stuff, and so they're they're today, and it, it was amazing. It was a solid game, 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 and what, and I loved some of the transitions with the developers like and different people yeah. saying here's my favorite games and here's my favorite moments i thought that was really cool it was very short you know nice little breakup transition between so you because you you got to take a break there trying to you know some of these games that they did it was just one after the other and right. i thought it was a real nice breakup so i really enjoyed the whole show and last thing i'm going to say about it is jack trenton Ex Sony guy that dropped the mic last year and was so ignorant towards Microsoft, he gave them an A rating on their show on their conference yeah. today. He rated good. them an A. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was it was good, and, and you know, like the thing that I really liked, you know, my favorite thing of the whole conference was that he came out and said everything that we're mentioning from here until later is 2014. And there was 13 items in my list of notes. And I did every single item that they announced. 13 items that are all coming out this year. And they spent well over... I think they spent an hour, if not a little bit more, on those 13 items. And then the last eight items are 2015 and beyond. And I think the only beyond one would probably be that uh, scale bound and probably the crackdown. Those ones I think might stretch... You know, maybe yeah. to 2016 because they went all the way down the line, and the division is coming in 2015. So, and everything else is early 2015, holiday 2015. The Witcher 3 is supposedly coming out, and and so on. So, I think those last two, that Scalebound and Crackdown, are possibly the only things that would possibly stretch into like early 2016. Right. And we'll probably see a lot more of them next, next year. year. Yep. So I, I loved it. I, I loved I loved that they did that. So, but um, so you want to touch real quick on the EA and the Ubisoft? Sure. Okay. Um, I didn't get to watch these. I got Me either. Very so. <laughs> small glimpses of stuff. Um, Bo, did you get a chance to watch both of these conferences? Uh, I watched the EA one. I did not see the Ubisoft one. Okay, good because I saw. The Ubisoft was the one I got most out of. Um, mm. I the EA just just wasn't working today. But um, so what I do know that they talked about they opened up with Star Wars Battlefront, um, mm. which I thought was really a letdown because they did a teaser last year and then this year there really there still wasn't anything. They're talking about like they're showing people like in the studio saying they're working on the game. Right. Okay. So where's some <laughs> game footage? You know what they it's... showed was like. Here's a rendering, or here's an artist's conception of, you know, it wasn't like, geez, you should have been further along. You talked about it last year. It's it's not even, it's not coming out this year, and if it is holiday next year, I'd be actually surprised. Yeah, this will probably be a 2016 as well. I Spring 2016, because I don't think they want Battlefront to compare, or to compete with, like, Battlefield. So, yeah. So, and I, I don't think there's going to be a Battlefield next year. So I think there's going to be a battlefield in, in the following year, which would be the same year as this. But Well, when's, yeah. when's the new uh, Star Wars movie coming out? Because that's probably 20, when it's going to tie in. 2015? Next so, year. Isn't that I don't know. Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't know when it's coming. That's right. Cause they haven't even started it's filming. Different. So. <laughs> no, then it's, it's got to be much later. Maybe it was 2017. Yeah, I'm going to say 2016, 2017 for the movie and the game. Yeah. So, which is, hey, take your time on it. I mean, no rush, but yeah, why... See, it, it's like this This is the stuff when we're talking about, like, games are getting announced too early. It's like, why? You know, why talk about it? 
but you know, no, I didn't see him talk about the next one that you have on the list. So well, you have I, to, the release date tell. is December eighteenth, twenty fifteen, according to Wikipedia. Mm. Okay, uh, I as might long be it's done, ready. Done with yeah. the division by then. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. Nice. So maybe that's when we'll see it. Because yeah, the it's scheduled for release on December eighteenth, twenty fifteen. So maybe that's the game. Yeah, Battlefront's supposed to be in conjunction with that game. So or that movie. Yeah. Oh. So. All right. All right. The uh, next one. What do we got? Uh, Mass Effect Four. Mm. Mm-hmm. And all we got really out of that was, and the image I got here, it says New Age. That's not the title. Uh, they didn't give us a title. That was just a screenshot that I pulled from trying to get something in here. I was scrambling today to put a show together again in such short time. Um, <laughs> so, again, all we know is that it's being worked on, that we're going to see uh, new characters, new story. Um, you know, we're going to see some of the characters we've seen before, but we don't know who we're going to play as. So. But I'm glad to know that it's being worked on, but I think we all knew that anyways. So it really didn't tell us anything new. Right. Uh, we also know that Mirror's Edge is still mm-hmm. in the works. Um, the only thing I got out of this one that I thought was kind of interesting was I caught them saying they want to make the game that that will be playable for everybody. Um, I, did, I liked Mirror's Edge, but I got to a point where I, I got stuck. It's like I couldn't make the stupid multiple jump combinations to get across a certain area so I couldn't get any further in the game. And I never did complete it. So they're supposedly going to rework it to make the game approachable from different... You're not going to... It's not going to be linear, I guess. So you're not like, you have to go down this hallway and double jump, triple jump, wall, climb, do these, you know, weird maneuvers to get across, there's, oh, well, then you can maybe find another route around. And that's what mm-hmm. they're working on doing. So I thought that might be kind of cool. So I might be able to give it another shot. And then, lastly, the one I had for them was, because um, I didn't go into all the stupid sports crap. Uh, yeah. But the uh, Battlefield Hardline um, is coming out October 21st. And uh, this is a new Battlefield game that's going to be cops and robbers, essentially. And they showed yeah. a lot of that. The beta went alive today for PC and uh, PlayStation 4. And mm-hmm. you can watch it on Twitch if you want to see what it looks like. And again, if you look at that game, this is what I was talking about earlier. The, the, it's the same thing. It's like the buildings and everything. Everything is like such the same and so... Uh, there's no texture or feel or life to anything in, in these Battlefield games. So right. I'm not as impressed as in their Frostbite engine because really, okay, you got destruction, but you, the games just don't look that good. There's not; It's lacking in detail where something mm-hmm. like Division just, oh my gosh, blows it away. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. But that, I mean, did you guys have any comments on the EA conference? Anything I missed or anything more on any of these games? You know, all the... Um, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, nope, um, nope, you're up. <laughs> you know, the sports games, again, they 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 look the same as they did you know, last year, the year before, the year before, the year before. Um, it, there's really no change um, other than the PGA Tour um, started out to look like it was going to be a serious golf game, and then as you took your tee shot, a battleship ran aground into the golf course. Um, you're kid- it- Is that what you were talking about? I yeah. didn't realize what you're talking about. That's yes. stupid. Yeah. All of a sudden, you were you were it was like Battlefield invaded the PGA game. They, I forgot what they called it. Uh, well, they they said you could you could play realistic, and it it shows you kind of up on an elevated tee, um, lining your shot up for the green, and you're by the ocean or something. There's a battleship kind of cruising out there, and as you take your shot and the ball's traveling through the air, it says you know you can play the game realistic. Or fantasy, and as I said, fantasy. This battleship carves through the ground, and your ball goes over the front deck, and then lands in the in the cup on the green. Okay. Well, I mean that. As far as that, there. I mean, if it's just like a goof off mode or sandbox mode, and it's an addition to the yes. game, then I, yeah, that, okay, I don't mind that. It's an addition. Okay. 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 As long as it's something not pushed on you, you know. I mean, for the people, because we were talking golf yesterday. Mm-hmm. 
you know, we like the simulation. We really like those golf games. Yeah, if that's something that you can turn on or off and, and just play around sometimes, sure. I think I think that's actually a, kind of a cool addition. I mean, personally, I'm excited for the NHL game. Um, you know, sports games are not games that I buy every year uh, anymore. I, I let two, three years go through because you're right. They don't change that much. But after three years, there is enough of a change to, mm-hmm. to warrant going out and getting so. And plus, I'm a huge hockey fan, so, you know, I'm up for that. But other than that, like Battlefield Hardline, I'll be in the – I'll probably grab the beta for PC. Um, I really don't know. You know, if I go and get an Xbox One, this one is not on my list. That I'll have other games to play, so. But Ubisoft Conference – so this one, they started out with an amazing start of Far Cry 4. They showed like the first five minutes of the game. Wow, does this thing look good? Is uh, it the same? Is it the same? I don't know if you watched the Sony press conference, but Sony also had Far Cry 4 there, and it was like st- it was like stop the convoy. You're on a bus. Nope, must have been different then. Because this one, like, you were on a bus, and the guy, some guy asked you to see your passport. Nope. And then nope. I looked away, and then I looked back up, and all of a sudden, like, they were, I don't know what was going on, if they found something on the bus, and then some guys jumped out, and the guys killed them, and then they start shooting at you in the bus. <laughs> yeah. Then you see this, the dude that's on the cover of the game, he appears, and then he starts taking a selfie with you, and <laughs> I'm mm. like, he's like, oh, I've been waiting for you, and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It was, But it was a really cool... It, the game looked amazing, so mm. I'm like, yep, I'll be playing Far Cry 4. <laughs> well, I'll let you... I'll let you... I'll tell you to go watch the one in the PlayStation thing, because when they played it there, it was almost like they didn't know what in the world they were doing. Like, the guy was shooting and, like, not even hitting anything. I mean, it was just... It, it made the game not look very good. I noticed <laughs> in that my opinion. in several games. I felt the yeah. same way about the um, Call of Duty that started the Microsoft right. press conference. Yeah. I also felt yeah. the same way about the game that I'm going to leave here for the end of the Ubisoft. I'm like, there's nobody there. Why is he shooting? <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I saw yeah. that on several things today. I was like, these guys yeah. kind of suck. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Far Cry was just kind of one of those things. But, you know, I'll wait for the last one. You can continue. Well, Uh, we already talked about, you know, the division, but. Yeah, we got to see some. They showed some different uh, gameplay, um, different things in there, but yeah, it's still amazing. Yep. And then uh, The Crew comes out November 11th. This is a Hmm. really cool looking game. I think this will be. I'm still sticking with uh, uh, Horizon, but that yeah. comes out what October? I forgot. That's the end of October, right? Gotta look back at my notes. Uh, September thirtieth. September thirtieth. Yep. So yeah, we might still pick up. Still might pick this one up. We'll see. Yeah. But I'll definitely still be playing. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Horizon two, but the crew looks like a really could be a really fun game. So. Yeah. Um, all right, and uh, uh, whoops, yeah, we can. We talked about Assassin's Creed, which is the next one you have there, coming out October twenty eighth. Yep. So. And then the last thing they showed, which made all the crap dancing and shape up games that they made us sit through at Ubisoft, this made it worth it. Rainbow Six Siege. Um. They finally announced, uh, I guess, Patriots. I don't know. I guess Patriots is gone. I don't know if mm-hmm. Patriots is still in the work. Nope. We have no idea, but Rainbow Six Siege was what they showed today. And as is, is excited as I was, when they first started showing it, I was like, and they went in and they're like, oh, they were talking about a hostage. I'm like, oh, this has to be, this has to be Rainbow Six. This has got to be like, you know, there was a mode I remember playing in some of those games where you had to, I could have swear it was Rainbow Six, where you had to go retrieve the hostage. You know, and I'm like, it's got to be Rainbow Six, it's got to be, and then sure enough it was. But the thing yeah. about it was that, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, this was awesome, it looks great. I didn't think it looked that good. <laughs> but there no, was, it, obviously it it's still early good. stages, and they, they, you know, yeah. hopefully they'll put some more detail in it. But some of the things I really liked were... <laughs> the planning 
Oh, is that your whistle again, Ron? Yeah, it's the fire whistle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so there, you can, you know, the planning stage. They decided where they wanted to come in at. Um, they were able to kind of see with the the little robot rolling in to see um, what defenses the terrorists were putting up, where the hostage was, um, and I thought that was cool. Except the defenses didn't seem to do much. Uh, they blew right through them with no problem, and you could they they were I liked that they could blast through blast holes in the in the ceiling or the floor to shoot down at the bad guys. Um, that when they put holes in the wall, you know I mean holes are being made in the wall, then they could use them to shoot back at, which I thought was really kind of cool. So the destruction looked really real and what I would expect in that type of situation. Um, but yeah, the game definitely needs some polish, but it's it's obviously a very early. Uh, you know, thing, and that's what Ubisoft closed with. So, I don't think it lived up to the hype of or to the excitement that Watch Dogs and The Division had. I think those games like blew everybody out of the water and was like shocked, you know, when those were introduced. This one didn't look as good as those did, and it wasn't anything like really new. It's just like, okay, fine, another Rainbow Six game, but you've promised this to us before, you've been talking about it for six years. And now, not only is Patriots gone, it's a brand new game. So, how far away is this still to, to be seen? So, it really, to me, didn't have the excitement of other Ubisoft finales. But it was really cool to see that, alright, there is a Rainbow Six game in the make. Maybe this one will make it to the store shelves, you know. You guys can hear me, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, my mic won't mute anymore, so I didn't want to make sure it was broke or something. <laughs> um. Yeah, the the game here when I was watching it, like the whole concept and everything looks fun, um, but the game d- does not look even close to being ready. It, to me, it was a it, it's a 360 game. It's not an Xbox One game. It's not an X you know current generation game. It's last gen. It's, well, it's sure the way it's it looks. Very pre alpha stage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm not knocking it because of that, but yeah, it's like again, it's like one of those things. Like, why did you show it? Why would you show that when you have the division and all those things out when this thing doesn't even look close to those? But yeah, still excited yeah. to see it. But yeah, it's a long way off in my opinion. Well, a lot of people were happy to see it. So I mean, yeah. I was too. I mean, this this and Crackdown, I was like, awesome. I'm you know, I got two franchises that I love that are they finally were announced. But again, they got to get here. <laughs> so yeah, but. That yeah. that's all I have. Um, yeah. Did you guys have anything further comments on anything else you saw or anything we we have discussed? Um, I watched just real quick. I can spend like two minutes on it. Um, I watched the Sony conference up until when we started. Um, so the things I saw there was they oh and and Xbox is also getting Destiny. I don't know if we actually mentioned that, but Destiny is also coming out this year. Oh yeah. Um, but they uh, Sony started off with Destiny. Um, they also um, showed um, geez, now I forget like the beginning of the conference. Uh, they did a bu- they did a lot of stuff on the indie games that they were showing there. Um, they went into something that's available today for ten dollars. It's an it's another indie game. Um, they have a Grim Fandango remake which I think is kind of cool but I'm not going to buy a Playstation for it it's one of those things if I can ever afford one I'll get one um, I saw the Phantom Pain which is Metal Gear Solid 5 mm-hmm. or Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain which is coming um, to the Xbox yep yeah, they showed uh, Batman uh, Arkham or Arkham Knight. Is it Arkham Knight yep mm-hmm. they showed Batman Arkham Knight um, the they yeah, they ended their show with Uncharted. A Thieves' End is what the name of that is. So it was cool to see uh, Drake was there. I guess that was who that was that I saw. Um, that was brief. Uh, they showed some beta stuff. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, one Morpheus. of the big surprises. Uh, they mentioned Morpheus. They mentioned Did you Morpheus. Any of that VR stuff. I thought they were going to be. That was going to be pretty big. No, they mentioned. They mentioned it's in their booth. Um, oh, they nice. the one cool thing that was there that a lot of, that surprised people because Media Molecule wasn't supposed to be there is Little Big Planet three and it's coming out uh, this year so 
that was kind of cool. It looked uh, there's like three new characters with Sackboy, so it, of course it's cute like all the other like little big planets. So that was kind of cool news. Um, what about the order? Uh, they showed the order. They showed more gameplay. The order, and I'll tell you what, that game looks awesome. So it it does really look good. I mean it it's something I can you know take their time making it. I know it's delayed till next year, but you know just make it good. Uh, they showed some new games, new IP. Um, some of them are really freaky. Uh, ones like Blood something. Bloodborne or something like that. I can't remember. Like you guys would have to go out and watch it. It's probably worth watching. And then, like I said, the last parts that I tried to catch, I you know couldn't hear or listen to. So I don't know how much exclusive this or exclusive that they were they were going into. But they spent the first ten minutes on Destiny. So um, to me, I'm I'm anxious to see what you know some of the media like Bo was saying yesterday he's worried that you know would they be jumping on the the Sony train I have to, for the hour that I watched um I don't think they pulled it off not th- not this year I think Microsoft might have got them this year so and that's just my own spinning I'm not saying it because I'm an Xbox you know we're an Xbox podcast but I just based on the time that I watched I I don't I don't see it. I mean, if they have to come out and they even came out when we were talking, they were coming out and talking about numbers like, oh, we shared one million sharing screens. Like, they came out and talked numbers and when you have to talk numbers during your conference then you are trying to find filler. And one thing I want to understand is I want to know why they get two hours and Xbox only gets an hour and a half. Is it just they choose to do an hour and a half or, or what? So... That was another thing I was kind of wondering about. Maybe it's because well, it's end, or maybe they're paying more money for it. I don't know. Well, they I also have Vita, the only so did maybe... an hour, I think. Ubisoft, yep. and, I mean, and EA, and mm-hmm. Ubisoft, I think, were only an hour. Yeah, I'm wondering it's if they have, because they have Vita. So it's like, you know, give us an extra time, because we have a whole other platform to talk about. Um, they talked about some PlayStation Plus I saw in there. Uh, but even somebody came into our our chat and there's like oh yawn or yuck Sony's conference was a bore, <laughs> so it's I'm gonna when we get off here I'm gonna hop on and see what people are saying. But you know uh, they ended with Uncharted, so the Batman game looked awesome. <laughs> so, but that's all I had to add in. I just want to throw that stuff out there because it was on while we were starting. All right, Bo, but, any last words? Um, no, really, um, the only thing that I would hope is for next year is that um, there's kind of a equal distribution throughout the year instead of everything great coming in the last 60 days of the year. Yeah. Hey, you, you were saying, I think, before we started recording about Re- uh, Red Dead 2. Was that it's it's has not officially been mentioned in the conference, but there are several uh, several sites that are confirming that it is in the works. Hmm. Awesome. Um, yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. So, so yeah, I would I would expect that um, probably see something next year for it for the following year release. Okay, well, I think that wraps up our post E3 special. So yep. thank you guys for uh, um, joining me as today, and uh, all of you for coming out and listening again. So we will be <laughs> back next Sunday with our probably a lot more E3 stuff because there's going to be a lot more announcements this week as stuff goes throughout the show. So we'll have all that for you next Sunday night, and uh, so be sure to come back and join us then. Um, with that, and I'll be. Fun. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I'll be missing for the next couple of weeks. So I head out on vacation. Yep. All right. So if anybody out there wants to join us uh, and fill in <laughs> for Brun, we might have. <laughs> sorry. Well, if you want to come back, <laughs> you get first dibs. Rob should be back next week, hopefully. He's he's out working right now. So uh, he, he was in the chat tonight. Yeah. 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 So hopefully, I don't know if he was still here, but um, hopefully he'll be here next week in. Uh, I will be as well. But we'll catch you guys next week uh, on the on the next episode. You know, I am Mark, a.k.a. Wingman709, taking off. I am Brun, BJ, Swick33. Have a good one. I'm Bo, Vengeful Loki. See you later. <laughs>